time for Media Watch now. And James Creedon is with us in the studio. Hi there, James. Hello. Very depressing news yeah. coming out of Syria, uh, Eastern Ghouta. It's been dubbed the new Aleppo. Uh, this is a place where government warplanes are bombing uh, this rebel-held district and have been uh, for many weeks now. Lots of children among the casualties. This is really, really shocking stuff. That's right. And we're, we're getting pretty reliable accounts, I think, from people on the ground, residents, photographers, whatnot. So there's images and uh, witness testimony uh, coming out of, uh, that is uh, painting a pretty grim picture from eastern Ghouta, uh, Ghouta, which is, of course, an enclave near Damascus. Uh, we are under shelling from all kinds of weapons. That's uh, Ayad Srawel, I hope that's pronounced correctly, a resident who spoke to Middle East, uh, Middle Eastern, uh, Middle East I dot net. You also have Omran Al Dumani, who says uh, we are all being we are being targeted with all kinds of weapons, heavy shelling. Uh, there's talk of, of, of barrel bombs as well. These these crude canisters filled with shrapnel and whatnot being thrown out of helicopters. And um, so the, the, the civilian population is really terrified. And uh, some uh, are saying that we are trapped. There is nothing more to do. People are preparing, basically, to die. Now, the other, you mentioned the comparison. And they're with, already starving and they're yeah. already not getting enough medical right. supplies. They're already living in these terrible conditions. They've That's already right. been subjected to allegedly chemical weapons attacks as well. I mean, it just literally can't get any worse for these people, can it's it? It's awful. And the comparison, you just made the comparison to Aleppo. There's also a comparison being made to Srebrenica. Uh, that's in The Guardian, Simon Tisdall. And the comparison there basically being uh, the fact that uh, the civilian population is, uh, is, is being attacked, essentially not being protected in any case. Uh, and people are sort of looking the other way. And this is uh, reminiscent of what happened uh, to uh, the Bosnian Muslim enclave back in 1995. And so that's a pretty alarming comparison to make because I think it's been widely understood as a massive failure of the international community. And But what we're seeing here is the attention of the big powers, as uh, this Guardian piece says, the US, Russia, regional actors such as Turkey is focused instead on the grand strategic game played, played over the corpses of half a million Syrians. The UN's response is pretty telling here as well. They've almost begged the pro-Assad coalition which is uh, showing how powerless they are in many senses. And you can see here UNICEF for the Middle East and North Africa saying there are no words. And they, they, they have essentially put up this empty tweet saying we're running out of words. No words will do justice to the Terrible. children. And we've just actually just this very minute, uh, a new death toll has been reported. 250 people have been killed in Eastern Ghouta in the last 48 hours. Right. So it's, 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 it's uh, only, Men, wor women and it's children. only worsening and intensifying. All right, so we've seen some pictures coming out of Eastern Ghouta. Uh, very few images are coming out of uh, another part of Syria. This is Afrin in the northwest, where a, a Turkish offensive is underway against Syrian Kurdish fighters, the YPG, the group that helped defeat ISIS in Syria. Uh, they are under attack. Pro-Assad fighters have come to their aid. Uh, not a lot of information coming out of Well, the of media can't really access no. it. They're being kept away largely by Turkish uh, forces. Uh, it's a war without images, according to Mediapart, the French... Uh, left leaning daily. This is an article from a couple of days ago. They're very critical of French media for not covering the event more, but in fact, the French media a lot of the time just didn't have any elements to to share. And I suppose no picture, no pictures a lot of the time, no story when it comes to uh, uh, visual media. Uh, Turkish media, let's remember, 156 different media out outfits have been shut down since the failed coup attempt in July tw 2016. Uh, so it's a very uh, difficult atmosphere. Uh, they have been warned as well. This is Deutsche Welle saying strong support for Turkish offensive de dissent oppressed. Essentially, President Erdogan warned of a heavy price for anyone who speaks out against what is being dubbed Operation Olive Branch. And uh, critics are accused of spreading terrorist propaganda. We saw as well three prominent Turkish journalists uh, earlier this month jailed for life. And no, uh, So that's the climate we're talking about. And the media, really, the Turkish media are just obliged to uh, speak of it in very positive terms and uh, in, indeed cite foreign media if ever there are questions that need to be asked. They can't actually ask those questions in and of themselves. Just very briefly, this is a very ripe environment, if you like, a ripe uh, climate for fake news to flourish. Our own uh, France 24 observers has been speaking about various videos showing uh, targets being struck in, in Afrin. These are actually videos that, that, that came from video games. They were being uh, shared on pro-Turkish uh, army uh, kind of social media. A lot of Turks as well actually shutting down their social media accounts because there are hundreds of cases every month of Turks being pursued mm. in the courts. And jailed. Or, uh, speaking, for Facebook posts. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really become quite, becoming quite a, an intolerant climate for free speech. James, thank you very much indeed. James Creed in there.